And what you do, you just feed the wood right in there. And I got some little oak blocks cut big enough that it'll fit in that hole. And it's making that flame go down in there. Good morning guys, welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead Slash Papa's Place. If this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Guys, it's a good rainy day. A rain that we've been needing. But it's been raining off and on today and I'm just out here under my little cupboard area and I'm finna do some cooking. Now, I'm going to be cooking on my rocket stove barbecue pit here. Now, if you don't know what my rocket stove barbecue pit is, I'll take a moment right here and I'll show you a little bit about it. But the rocket stove barbecue pit is just an old barbecue pit. And I built me a rocket stove, and it worked so good, I built me one and inserted it in the bottom of this barbecue pit. And what you do, you just feed the wood right in there. And I got some little oak blocks cut big enough that it'll fit in that hole. And it's making that flame go down in there. On the front, you got the door. You have to leave it open when you're cooking because that's how it gets air to burn your wood to put in there. And it's got a little ashtray there that you remove. Now here's just a regular rocket stove that you could feed the wood the same way and set your pots on top of to cook. But if you want to see more on the rocket stove, I got a video I'll attach above or I'll attach it at the end of this video where you can go back and watch my rocket stove, how it works. And I got some other videos where I cooked on them and such. But today, I hadn't cooked on it in a while, and I wanted to get it out and cook. But what are we going to be cooking today, you may be asking? Well, I don't can't remember what I cooked last time, but I'm cooking me up some squirrel. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. We're going to cook it in that Dutch oven on, on that rocket stove pit right there. So let me get you all on over here a little bit closer. So the first thing I got here, I got my little electric skillet set up out here. And I got my squirrel and I got them cut up and they flour. And today I'm using just simply Miss Lippy's Swamp Mix blend. That's all I got on it for seasoning. And we're going to put these squirrel in this grease and brown them there in just a minute. So we're going to make us some gravy out of that browning that's left over from browning this squirrel. After we brown these squirrel, I make me some gravy. Then we're going to put it in that Dutch oven with that gravy and we got some potatoes cut up and I got some peppers and onions cut up and some of them carrots that I just got out of my garden the other day that I have cut up. We're going to put them in that little Dutch oven. And we're going to try to keep it about 250 degrees and we're going to let it cook a couple hours. But right now all I'm going to do is brown this squirrel. Tell my little table here ain't plumb level. My grease is wanting to run to one side. That's all right. I can just pick it up and make it run to the other side. We ain't cooking the squirrel here. All we're doing is just giving it just a little bit of a brown. I'll let it brown on one side there just a little bit and flip it over. Like I said, it don't take just a minute to do what we're doing on this part. You ain't trying to cook the squirrel. Guys, you can do this if you want to do it with pork. Get you some pork chops. Do the same thing. And have you a good meal. 
reason I try to use just a little bit of grease like that, because I don't want to waste your grease. You put too much grease, then you can't, you have to pour some of it off to make your gravy. You'll have too much grease. Them pieces right there I'm going to call good. And you can brown them browner than that if you like it. These last ones I may brown a little dark. But I'm just taking them out and putting them in a pan over here for the time being. This is the easy way to do it, right here. Like I said, if you put too much oil in there or grease, you're just going to have to pour it off and waste it. If they waste it, I guess you could pour it in something and save it for later, but I don't like doing that. Electric skillets is handy for cooking outside. I'm going to say that's good enough for what I'm doing. I'm going to turn that heat up higher. I've been taking some of this leftover flour and pour in there. And we're going to stir that around and we're going to brown this flour. I'm going to turn my heat back down a little bit. See that flour soaking all that oil that was left up in there up? Jack that fire all the way up again. I got some hot water right here that was boiled in this little pot outside. Just a little electric pot that boils water. Watch that steam, that's hot. You want to pour water and stir. my fire back down a little bit. The electric skillets get hot quick. Y'all hear that thunder? It's gonna get us a little more rain it looks like. And you can make your gravy as thick or as thin as you like it. I don't like it very thick. Oh, I like it real thick, but it don't like me. <laughs> now I'm going to take some more of this Miss Lippy's Swamp Mix. There's Miss Lippy's Bayou Blend Swamp Mix, guys. And I'll put in the description below this video the link where you can go purchase this. You've got several different kinds of seasonings, and they are all good. her seasonings you ain't gotta add nothing else you don't need no salt and peppers and nothing else really you about got everything in them seasonings you need
Now at this point, I gotta cook, and I don't finally chop mine, but that is heatless habaneros, Savannah sweet peppers, and heatless jalapenos, and some onions. And you can see I leave mine chopped up pretty big, because I'm putting them in there for flavor. I ain't putting them in there to eat. We're going to put the top on that, and we're going to let that simmer a little bit. And I may add a little bit more water. Yeah, I'm going to have to add a little more water. It's getting thicker than I wanted it again. Boy, that's smelling good already. Guys, just about anything you see me cook, I swap up on the seasonings, but I put them onions and heatless habaneros and heatless jalapenos and Havana sweet peppers. I put just about that in any kind of meats and stuff I cook outside on the grill and in the oven and such. I just love the flavor it puts on stuff. All right, I'm gonna add some more water to this, thin mine on down. Like I said, you can make your gravy as thick or thin as you like. I jack the heat back up, bring it back up to a boil just about. And we're gonna be ready to pour this into the Dutch oven. Y'all can see it's back up to a bowl. Unplug this electric skillet here. Guys, I'm gonna move y'all over here to this Dutch oven. We're gonna pour our gravy right in this Dutch oven. Smells good. I can just take some mashed potatoes and eat that right now. I'm going to take this squirrel and I basically just dope it in there. Taters cut up. I like leaving mine in some bigger chunks and carrots. We're going to stir that around to make sure everything's covered with the gravy good. You can do this with any kind of your favorite seasonings, like I said, your favorite meats. You can do your roast like this. You can do pork chops like this. You ain't got to be cooking on no homemade rocket stove. You can put it in your stove in the house. Set it on about 300 degrees. And squirrel needs to cook about two and a half hours. Makes it good and tender. Of course, pork chops and other meats, you don't have to cook that long. Thunder roll. We're going to put that lid on there. Shut the lid to this pit. And guys, I'm going to fill the back up. You can see I split this wood and I cut it thin. But you have to cut these are oak. I'm going to fill the back up. Then as they burn down, I just take a little poker and keep them poked down to the bottom and they're going to keep the flame going up in there to keep the pit hot. You also, with this rocket stove here, you could use charcoal if you wanted to. Put charcoal down in it. I just like cooking with the little oak wood. 
Now cooking in a Dutch oven like that with a lid on it, I have just used pine wood. As long as you let it burn and get all your smoke burn out and get some hot coals and burning good, and you're cooking with a lid on it, it don't matter really what kind of wood you're cooking with as long as you got a lid on it. But I prefer oak. See guys, you see the temperature is slowly coming back up. About 175 right now. Once it gets up very close to that 300 mark, and I know that heater's full, I'm finna go in the house at the moment and take me a little nap. And then I'll get back out here with y'all and we'll see what this looks like. All right, guys, we've been cooking about two and a half hours. I went in there and I took me a nap, but let me tell you, when you're cooking on a rocket stove, I took just a little bit too long of a nap when I come back out there, my fire, so it don't hold that much wood. But I got her fired back up and been cooking. It's been about two and a half hours. We done got several rains through the day. It come a flood while I go. But while I was in the house, I whooped me up something. I want to show y'all. Get y'all over here a little bit closer when I open this lid. To go along with our squirrel and our potatoes and our gravy. Papa cooked up some biscuits. See what they look. Oh yeah, look how pretty they are. We flip them over and let that top brown just a minute. So you can cook you some biscuits right here on top of your Dutch oven while you cooking your meal. I'm going to shut that back. Now, guys, if you want to see the video on how I make biscuits, them are what I call camp biscuits or cathead biscuits. I'll attach a video above because I got a video already made of me whooping them biscuits up. It ain't nothing to it, just three ingredients to make you some good homemade biscuits. But I'll attach that video above if you would like to go back and watch that. But the little rocket stove oven heater, I call this my outside oven. And my temperature here never did get up to 250. But guys, I'm going to pull these biscuits off here in just a second. And we're going to take that lid off and I'm going to show y'all what's been cooking. So I'm going to give it just a minute here and we're going to pull the biscuits off. All right, I got the biscuits pulled off. And guys, when I was saying this, the thermometer here hadn't reached 250 degrees. That may not be but 250 degrees, but it's hotter in there in that cast iron pot and that heat coming straight up on the bottom of it than 215 degrees. I figure where them biscuits was setting Probably about like being in a 350 degree oven, maybe a little hotter, because it didn't take them that long to cook. And I had to flip them. I had to flip them twice doing that. And one time I thought I was showing y'all me flipping them and I forgot to turn my camera on. <laughs> but I'm gonna get y'all over here and show y'all what this looks like. And man, it smells so good. Look at there, guys. Some good squirrel and gravy. You can tell that I could have thinned that gravy on down a little more. Them taters is falling plum apart. They done cooked too long. That squirrel's pretty tender. I can just poke that fork through it. Like I said, you got to cook squirrels a long time to get them good and tender. But, guys, you can do this with any kind of meat, like I was saying. You can take you some pork chops, do the same thing, any kind of meat, whatever kind of meat you want. But there she is, guys. I'm saying she's done. So all in all, that is to cook the meat in the pot there has been about two hours and 45 minutes. And guys, I'm going to go on and close this video. But after a while, when my wife gets in and it's supper time in the house, we fix a plate. I have a little clip of there, the plate, and tasting it. 
But right now, I want to tell y'all, I appreciate y'all watching. It was a rainy day. I just wanted to throw something together, and then it got to raining so hard, I said I'd just go take a nap, and then it got to storming so bad I couldn't nap. But I enjoyed y'all watching. I hope you enjoyed this little cooking. And you might want to go back and watch that video on this rocket stove. It's pretty neat how you can just cook with some small pieces of wood. But like I said, now you got to stay on top of it. You can't go take a nap like I did. I actually took a little bit more than a nap, and then the rain was so bad I didn't come out and my fire done burnt down too much. But you got to stay on top of it and steady feed it wood, what I'm trying to say. But it's a good way to cook. Yeah, and you can use charcoal in it. You can put charcoal bricks in it if you want to put charcoal in it. But guys, if you're new to my channel and you ain't never subscribed, please reach up there and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. It don't cost you a thing. You may see some more videos, get a notification of a video you may like to watch. And the best way you can help me out is by giving me that thumbs up if you like my video and sharing my videos on your social media with your friends and loved ones. As always, I hope y'all have a great day. God bless. See y'all next time. Well, guys, my wife is working a little too late, and I'm hungry, so I ain't waiting on her. But that right there is what she turned out to look like. Biscuit and gravy and taters and meat. That's all a man needs. See, I tender that media. If you ain't never eat squirrel cooked like this, you don't know what you're missing. I could have put just a few more onions in there. Other than that, that's seasoned just right for me. Guys, I hope each and every one of you is having a good supper tonight, just like I'm having right here.